mission and we're reporting to you from the summit of Aldonio Lengai. We're here in Tanzania to study the unique carbonatite lavas of this volcano and the interaction between volcanology, tectonics and the impact on the local communities in the area of the volcano. Here's our story. In June 2015, a team of us from the Earth Sciences Department travelled to Tanzania for three weeks to put into practice what we'd learned in our course. But our story didn't start in Tanzania. It started nine months earlier in the Gregory Building at the University of Glasgow. Like, After finalising the team of 13 students and two lecturers, we began the mammoth process of pulling the logistics of the trip together. Our plan was to make it to the village of Ngari Cerro in the Lake Natron Basin, far in the northwest of Tanzania. However, before we could think about any of this, we faced serious funding challenges. Yeah, so definitely the biggest challenges that we face is time and money. So we've only got uh, eight weeks now until the expedition leaves and uh, we still don't have that money and uh, yeah, we're against the clock now. It's such a big challenge faced to get the right money in time. I really don't know if we'll get it and if not, then there's a huge question mark placed over if this expedition can actually go ahead. Although money and time is against us, we've got a, a lot of personality within the team going for us. So in that sense, uh, we are in a positive position. We are here with the Tanzania team, we're at Glen Shee, and today we are climbing nine Munros to fundraise for our expedition this summer. As summer crept closer, the money we needed started to come in. Finally, we could look forward to the research we'd set out to accomplish from the start. We're going to catalogue our eruption history that we can help to improve risk mitigation strategies in the area and improve the understanding of, our, of the volcano will benefit the local mass site. And by the start of June, everything was set and all that was left to do was to pack and to get ourselves to the airport. So we've just arrived in Dar es Salaam uh, after leaving Glasgow yesterday morning. So we left the Doma this morning and we're now halfway to Ngarosera where we'll set up our base camp uh, near Odonio Lengai. So here we are in Ngarosero village. Lovely little village here. Uh, you see out over the savannah and onto the mountains out there. To my right we have Lake Natron down there and Odonio Lengai itself is just to the left there. After we'd got settled into camp, we met the group of African geologists and the support team who would be joining us on our expedition and started to plan our fieldwork. In the East African Rift, the complex interplay between plate tectonic movements and volcanics carved a dramatic landscape of flat savanna plains with high volcanic sides. And we're here to study the carbonatite lava because it's so different from any other lava that erupts in the world. It's about half the temperature of your typical basaltic lavas. Another aspect that we're really interested in here is the fact that between the two plates that are pulling apart, we've got a smaller plate which is rotating. As a result, there's a lot of interesting faulting that we can measure and look into. And hopefully this will show to us how the volcanics and the tectonics in this region are interacting. So fieldwork began, and our first objective was to look at the past volcanic activity in the area to build up a history of previous eruptions. So what we can see here are huge layers of ash deposited both from eruptions from the main vent of the volcano but also from smaller eruptions from the side vents. So to measure this and to kind of see the story that these tell, we do something called logging, which is when we draw the layers, each layer of rock, and looking at these layers in turn shows us the eruption history of the volcano and it shows how the volcanic eruptions have changed over time. Okay, so behind us here and to the side on the crags you can see a dark rock and that rock is a lava deposit from a volcano which used to be in this crater that we're standing in right now. 
And then on top of the lava, there's kind of a light grey layer, and that is a rock called Tuff. Um, and Tuff is um, deposited from ash flows from a volcano. So we know that the volcano first deposited this lava, and then on top of this, there was, an, there was a deposit of ash. So from taking simple observations and measurements of the landscape, we were able to make detailed assumptions about the type of volcanic activity that was acting in the area for thousands of years before we got there. So in summary for the volcanology, we have clear evidence of the dominance of explosive eruptions from the, from the crater. It began with this vent clearing phase and the deposition of coarse breccias, a lot of moisture in the atmosphere and also depositing lots of wet ash. So it's not just a simple explosive blowout crater, it's a very, very dynamic volcanological environment. After discovering what had happened on the surface of the Earth with volcanic eruptions, we wanted to learn more about what was going on beneath it. To do this, we looked into the activity of the tectonic plates in the area, which incidentally have a particular relevance to the University of Glasgow. This particular area uh, lies on a, a rift called the Gregory Rift, and the Gregory Rift is named after John Walter Gregory, and he was actually the chair in geology at this university for 25 years. Uh -huh. So there's a kind of like link between um, where we were going and a uh, link into the heritage of the university as well. So it kind of feels like we're kind of maybe following in the footsteps a bit of this, uh, a really kind of high profile geologist of his time. We are currently walking through very extremely long grass to get to these trees which we're nearly at, so we can look at the falls. We were searching for faults because we hoped they would tell us exactly how the volcanic eruptions interacted with plate tectonics. So we've got to where we think the fault is and we can't see any exposures as such but we think it is running below where we're standing now. Okay, so there's two sections of the fault and we think that this line of trees here is the second section but right now we're standing in the gap between the two. We eventually found what we were looking for. As we followed the line of trees, we were led to a gaping hole eight metres deep. We knew that this particular area contained a fault because the direction of the fault and the measurements we took matched observations of other faults over a kilometre away. We also knew because we could observe the offset that it caused in the crater wall. This offset meant that the original layers of rock were distorted and no longer matched their original geometry. In the Aldonio Lengai area, volcanology and tectonics are so closely linked you cannot look at one on its own. The faults in this region cut through beds of lava offsetting them by up to 80 metres. It is clear from this that the area is undergoing continuous tectonic movement and volcanic eruptions, and this landscape is in a constant state of transformation. So it's clear that volcanoes have a huge impact on the landscape around the Lake Natrum Basin, but we want to look at how this impacts the local people who live in this area as well. Over the time we've been here, we've spoken to several groups of locals and tourists to see how they perceive the threat of the volcano and how they adapt to it. When speaking to people, the first thing they talk about is the impact of the ash falling in the area. With each eruption, there are huge plumes of ash that go up into the air and fall onto the surrounding landscape. We spoke to our Maasai guide, Timoth, who told us about his experience of the last Odonyo Lengai eruption and also the impact falling ash had on the local area. Because they take a time uh, to sleep outside, as nomads, they know that inside of the houses are very hot. And then uh, around 2.30, uh, the eruption appear, and uh, people they had that there is some uh, there are some things like uh, like uh, rain which is falling from uh, from the sky, and after that the people wake up and, uh, and see that oh it's, this is not uh, this is not rain and and try to escape it to enter the houses, so uh, it make people to not going out to not going out uh, outside of the houses and not able to move, uh, to take the kettles out for grassing time. Two weeks, uh, two weeks, they, 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 we, can, we had a rain. Where, where, is, where is clean, the old grasses, old grass and the old, old landscape. And then they, with the, our kettle, they can, they get to, they, uh, they succeed to, to get to grassing again. We also spoke to our tour operator, Edward, who told us of a much more positive impact the volcano had on the area. The Old Nilingai, uh, which is a very active volcanic mountain, it has a very big impact and a very positive uh, uh, benefit to the village uh, because uh, a lot of the 
uh, youth people they get an employment for acting as a guide for the guy which help the people uh, to track the Lunin guy and they gain uh, something back to them like money it has increased the uh, the growth of the village by making it uh, economically stable from speaking to just a few people who live and work in Ingaricero, it became clear that there is a range of positive and negative impacts of the volcano. There is currently conflict in the area. Locals say that the government are trying to make the Maasai people leave their homes so that the Lake Natron Basin can be turned into a conservation area. To do this, they say it is too dangerous to live near an active volcano. However, it is clear that the Maasai people are able to live in harmony with the hazard, and they place a religious value on it. Odonio Lengai translates as Mountain of God, and the locals' lifestyle is based around cultivating and worshipping the landscape around them. Therefore, the more we can understand about the interaction between local people and the geology, the better their views can be supported on national levels. So, so far on the trip, we've looked at the physical and human impact of the Odonio Lengai volcano, but to fully understand it, we're going to have to climb it. With a height of just under 3,000 meters, and with slopes as steep as 50 degrees, Odonio Langai sure promised to be a challenging climb. Safely get to the summit and avoid climbing in the heat of the day, we left camp at 9pm. Our plan was to climb all night and reach the top in the morning. Okay, it is camp past 9 and there's about 50 people on the bus so we're all going to climb Odonio Langai. We're uh, at the bottom of the volcano right now, we're about to ascend up it. Uh, spirits are high. Um, so far, the climb has been really good. I think the spirits are so positive. We just found out we are halfway, which maybe disappointed some people actually, but we only have two and a half hours to go. We've just summited of Daniel Wenge. It's eight o'clock in the morning and we left. Claim here at 9 o'clock last night. <laughs> Whilst on the summit, we were also lucky enough to see a rare eruption of carbonatite rock. The highlight of the expedition has to be getting to the top of Old Daniel Line Guy and seeing into that crater, looking out over the whole Lake Natural Valley and thinking to yourself that, that that view, this moment is what the last six, seven months of your life has been building up to. Uh, that's our last day in Tanzania now, but we're ready to head to the airport. It's been good fun, but ready to go home. I would like to say thank you for the University of Glasgow for arranging the expedition in Tanzania. Go back to Scotland and share the knowledge you have with the other Scottish people. Geology, I learned a lot of, um, about the local culture and that's probably what I'm mostly going to take home with me. We were very lucky as whilst out there we got invited to a Maasai wedding and also got to take part in the ceremony itself. Hello, we are, we are from Scotland, Glasgow, Scotland and we are so thrilled to be here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> The really good part was that everybody made it in the end and everybody's happy, so that's just fantastic. Just hearing almost all of the team say that the final two days that we had was up there in their top 10 days of life ever. Yeah.